Hey, Rainbow here and welcome to my channel. I'm gonna give you one guess what has to be replaced after 17,000 miles on a Ducati Multistrada V4S. Oh, by the way, see this little maneuver? I guess I'm watching Brett the Cax too much. And at $170.05 per side times two, it's not cheap when you have good Brembo brakes, now is it? Well, let's take a look and see what it takes to replace the pads. Because honestly, it's one of the easiest things that you can do. Now you only need a few things, and this is what I use, and I may actually not use everything that you see here. But some of them, of course, I am going to use. A flat tip screwdriver is always comes in handy. All right. I use a car brake caliper because of that big flat stock piece of metal that helps me to kind of open up the pads a little bit easier. Now I can't use the tool because it's too big for a motorcycle caliper, but I use the, the flat stock of it. All right. A torque wrench and good luck finding the exact number, but I'm somewhere around 33 foot pounds. Uh, is what I'm getting for the caliper bolts. You need an eight millimeter hex head, some anti-seize lubricant. I prefer copper, but I don't have it, so I have the uh, silver color. The Super Lube, it's all-purpose grease, but it's a higher grade uh, marine grease. I don't think I'm gonna use that because I think it's just gonna do nothing but collect dust. The silicone is gonna come in handy for cleaning, and of course the brake cleaner, some towels, something to put the um, bolts in, and of course, a little bit of a spray bottle with some degreasing type of fluid so that you can clean things up with that used toothbrush or buy a new toothbrush, depends what you wanna do. Now, you see the scouring pad there? That green scouring pad, we're gonna use that specifically for the rotors. We're gonna make sure that we clean up those rotors really well. Take two. Now, big disclaimer here. I am not a certified Ducati mechanic. I am not a certified trained Brembo brake specialist. I'm just a guy that has a lot of experience doing mechanical work, both professionally and personally. And I have had to change things anywhere from motorcycle brake pads all the way up to calipers and entire new systems for large over-the-road diesel tractor trailers with the big drum brakes on cars, on pickup trucks, on dump trucks. I have pretty much changed it all. So this is why I'm saying this is a really simple job. If you are not comfortable doing this job, then by all means, do not attempt this job. I'm not saying that this is the best way to do it. I'm not saying that it's 100% the right way to do it. What I'm saying is this is what's been working for me for decades. That's really the bottom line. Proceed if you're going to do this job at your own risk because nothing's really much more important on a motorcycle than the brakes. Now that we got that out of the way, let's continue. One of the most important aspects of this is making sure that your reservoir is not completely full, that you have some uh, some space in that in there, because what's going to happen when you push on those pucks, you're going to be pushing fluid back up into the reservoir and you don't want it to overflow, push out and get all over your bike. So make sure that there's enough space in there and be very careful as you're pushing the pucks in and you're going to see me do this. You want to go up and check the reservoir to make sure that the reservoir has some air space, has some basically some head space in there. That's really important that you do that. Otherwise, you're going to have to take some of the fluid out. All right, so go ahead and let's start loosening up these bolts right here. Real easy, that's a good sign. You wanna be really careful with this. These are certainly things that we don't want to over torque because if we over torque these, you're gonna end up having an extremely expensive repair. 
Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that don't lose. There are spacers here and here. So don't lose these two spacers, okay? And just pull them out. One of the things you're going to want to do is wear some good gloves like nitrile and so on and so forth. Not because you don't want to get your pretty little hands dirty, but because when you get to the part where you are going to be working with the brake pad, the new brake pads, you don't want to risk getting the new brake pad dirty at all. And you certainly don't want to get any of the oils or anything that's on your hands onto those brake pads. All right, so let's take this off and put these parts, including, don't forget, the two spacers for top and one for top, one for bottom, into a container because we're going to be cleaning them up. Now, when we pull this out, we want to pull this out directly away and shimmy it away. I also have something ready. I have a nice solid wire that's green that you're gonna to see to help support this so we don't have the weight and the pressure on these on the lines coming out of it, okay? Shimmy straight away. And it's already pretty well supported, but we'll make sure we have some extra support in here. So it doesn't put any pressure on anything. I'm doing the left side of the bike to show you because it's actually the harder of the two. And the reason why is on the left side, we have two hoses coming down to the banjo fitting, plus we have other cables that come off and go over to the ABS that are attached to that hose assembly. So we're going to have a lot less room to work with when it comes time for doing this. The other side significantly easier. It only has one hose coming to it. That's it. So what you're going to do is you're going to come in and you're going to see that you have your four pucks and your two different pads and as you can tell mine are pretty significantly worn down okay the pads come out through the center these do not have a pin these don't have pins up here that the pads slide back and forth on they actually slide back and forth on this little clip that you can probably can't see right now that we're gonna take off I'll get another camera angle on that all right so what I do is I just use a product like this which is really a regular brake caliper and I'm just going to compress these pucks a little bit because I can't get my fingers in there to do it. So I'm going to do it this way. All right. And I'm also at the same time going to look up to make sure that my reservoir isn't overflowing. Let's see how much space I have left in my reservoir. Okay, that's getting close to the top. So now it looks like I can probably shimmy one of these pads out. And once you get the first one, and this is at a bit of an angle here, so I'm going to use a little screwdriver. Be careful not to really touch the pucks. All right, just try to, I'm just trying to straighten this out so that this pulls so easily right out all right and then once you get the first one out the second one should be a piece of cake what's going to be difficult <laughs> is going to be getting them back in all right so you can see the wear on here there's a little bit of meat left on this one the one that came off the inside of the rotor is certainly worn down a little bit more than that one so there's a little uneven wear but I had the same thing on the other side all right, so now we have this clip 
which I may or may not have. I'm just gonna bump this clip. And you pull this clip out right here. And again, this is something else that we're going to take care of because this is what everything rides on. It rides back and forth. Basically just helps lock them in place on your calipers. All right. All right, next thing is to clean up. So I put a piece of cardboard here to help keep some of it from spraying on. Maybe some of you have really good, you know, uh, wheels that you want to take care of. So I'm just going to put this like soapy product in here, which is what I just made. And then you can just slowly, <laughs> with the right side of it, start cleaning it all up, but not just the outside, okay? The most important part is that you're cleaning the inside, all right? And especially if anywhere you want to clean around these pucks, okay? And you want to try to get all the way around. So I'll be at some point flipping them over and trying to get the other side of the pucks to get all of that dust and grime off of there. Now this is going to take a while. I'm not going to have you watch me do the whole thing, but it's going to take a little bit. You may want to very carefully press the brakes slightly to push these pucks out a little bit more so that we're getting all the way around because these pucks are critical. They go in and out and on seals. And if those seals get jazzed up, then you're gonna end up having a leaky caliper. And the last thing you wanna have is a leaky caliper. So all we wanna do is just kinda get this as clean as we can get it and then get ready to put the uh, pads back in. Now again, if you hit and squeeze your brake lever right now and these pucks blow out, it's game over. You might as well buy a whole new caliper seal kit and you're going to have to, you're going to have fluid all over the place. So be very, very careful. See, I'm testing these, these uh, pucks. I'm making sure that they all work and that they're all going in and they're all going in and you gotta be careful because sometimes if you push one in the other one comes out because there's no resistance against them okay so just keep spraying it up keep doing your best to clean the hell out of this and get this nice and clean and we'll get this all prepped now I'm gonna come back to this one of the things you also want to make sure that you clean is you want to make sure that you clean your bolts, okay? Because your bolts are going to go back in. These are what hold the calipers on. In this particular bike, they are radially mounted, okay? Radially mounted. They're not bolted into the side, so these are stronger and better. And we're also, don't forget that we're going to want to spray this thing up, okay? And we certainly want to clean this up. now. I think that the next time I change these pads, if I have the bike that long, I will be changing these little clips at the same time. Uh, and honestly, uh, just from a standpoint of keeping things up and running well, this is probably something, these clips is probably something that you should maybe want to consider changing every, every time that you change your pads. It's not necessary, it doesn't come with a kit, but it could be a good idea for some of you that do a lot of hard braking and maybe do some track time with this. All right, so let me continue with this and we'll be back. Once you get it cleaned up as good as you think you're going to, and you get all the little nooks and crannies the best that you can, all right, it's not super critical, but it's a darn good idea for you to spend a lot of time. Again, what's really important is, I'm gonna repeat this because it is, is getting all the way around these pucks when they're pushed out a little bit, and especially if they're out a little bit because then you're gonna make sure you have a good seal all the way around. It's at that point that maybe you wanna get a little bit of brake clean. It'll help kind of dry things out, maybe get some more of those little nooks and crannies that you couldn't. All right. And make sure that 
you don't spray it in your eyeball. So now that you've sprayed the brake clean, it dries a lot of it out, gets rid of a lot of that water, not all of it. You might have to go inside the pucks to get rid of some of that water, which isn't super relevant to be quite honest with you. You just don't want it dripping out and then you're wondering what the hell it is. You know, you just want it to be mixed with something that you don't want to be on here. But you get these things nice and clean. And then I do something that's a little bit different, okay? I'm gonna put the clip back in, all right? Now the clip only goes one way. It can't go, whoops, any other way. And it'll get hung up on the little, on the pucks. It'll actually, it could get hung up on. So if you wanna make sure that we're up and in, all right? So you heard that clicking in place, and if you can see if it'll focus, these two little spots right here. This now, see it? That's in place, the clip is in place, and I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna spray a little bit of silicone grease around the pucks and on the back here. Just a little bit, and then I'm gonna wipe it not off, it'll wipe the excess off. We certainly don't want to have any of that silicone landing at all on the brake pads themselves. So we have to be careful. But I just like to keep a little bit of lubricant around those pucks. Alrighty. With no extra laying around. And now we're gonna get ready to put the pucks in, but before we do that, we wanna make sure we completely dry or change your gloves. In this case, because of the silicone, I have to change my gloves in order to do this, all right? Double check one more time. That we have all the silicone off. Let's change our gloves. And now it's time to put the $170.05 set of front brake pads for one side back in. And this is gonna be the hardest part. Okay. So that one went in easy. Now we have to pull it in to make some room to put the other one in. There's one side and there's the other side. Okay, there we go. Now we have exactly what we need. Both pads are in place exactly where they're supposed to be and there's more than enough space there. Now, again, still do not touch, absolutely do not touch your uh, brake lever just yet, okay? Just remember, we have a nice space in there, the clip's in place, these pads aren't going anywhere. Now the next thing you wanna do is get some Scotch-Brite and to keep it from going everywhere, spray some brake clean on the Scotch-Brite, all right? And go all the way around your caliper on both sides, getting it nice and clean, all right? You can spin your wheel, which I'm gonna do in a second. Go through and clean it all off because we wanna get all of that stuff off. There's not much there now, but we wanna get as much of this off as we can to let those brake pads, those brand new brake pads wear in and set their own little grooves and not have to follow in the 
gliding over the top of grime and dirt. And now it's time to put everything back in. We have a nice big gap here. We didn't spill too much. <laughs> Actually, we didn't spill any up at the reservoir. Time to take this out. This lines up. See, right on. Now, before we put these back in, I grab a little bit of thread, not thread lock, anti-seize. Again, I prefer copper. I don't have any copper on me, so I'm using the silver stuff. Just a little bit, not much, just at the base. Some anti-seize on both of them. Just a little bit. It's a little bit too much. All right. And now, put the bottom one in, put the spacer on, line it up, get the threads going, just a few threads, so that we have some room with the top one to get our spacer back on and thread these back in. So here's what I do for this. All right, there is a little bit of wiggle room with this before it gets tightened down. So what I'll do is I'll take this and I will just snug them literally just a little bit by hand. All right, just a little bit by hand, not all the way just till it touches, all right? So I have a little room for it to move if it wants to move. And now I'm going to squeeze my brakes, my front brakes. I'm going to squeeze my front brakes and let this center up. So now that I've squeezed them and they're all centered up, you can feel, because initially when you start squeezing, you have no brake pressure. And then as you squeeze more and more, the pucks come out touch the rotor, compress against each other, and you're good to go. So now it's time to torque them. In the two different places that I found, I'm coming up with 33 foot-pounds, whatever that equals to in Newton meters, but 33 foot-pounds for each one of these, and that's what we're gonna set it to. Oops, wrong way. Get them a little bit more snug. I really don't like tightening anything all at once. There's 33, and I'm using a half inch bar with a half inch drive. There's 33. And it looks like we are done. Next thing to do is for the next probably 40, 50 miles is keep an eye on it, see how it feels. Well, this is Rainbow, and that's how I do it. If you like this, please like and subscribe. I will do more how-to as I find reasons to do things on this Ducati Multistrada V4S. Again, I am not a certified mechanic anymore. A uh, long time ago I was, but this is the way I've been doing things for decades. It works for me. Just did a test ride, bike works great. And please, anything you do, such as what I've showed you here, you're doing at your own risk. Thank you and have a good day. Rainbow, I'm out of here.